The astronauts were told a moment ago that they can expect a go for the next revolution, which would also mean a go for... As a matter of fact, Bill just mentioned that the visibility seems to be excellent just about up to the Terminator, something which I didn't expect. I thought there'd be a little bit more uh, a gradual shift to darkness, but it's uh, very uh, sharp and distinct. Roger, Jim. The Terminator... Terminator is the uh, eight, uh, sunset line. All of your updates are in. The computer is yours, though. As you look at the moon from Earth, the Terminator is the point where the brightness of the moon ends and the dark begins. Terminator of sunlight. Roger. Break. Uh, Apollo 8, uh, Houston, your TEI-2 pad is good. Stand by to copy your TEI-3, over. TEI is transfer conjecture, uh, injection. Uh, this information being fed up to put into the computer are the various emergency uh, procedures. TEI-3, If they choose to uh, fire their engine and get out of lunar orbit earlier than planned. The plan, transfer injection, comes uh, shortly after midnight around 1 o'clock tomorrow morning. The next firing of the engine uh, will come in about an hour and 21 minutes from now. That's the one that puts the spacecraft into a circular orbit. It's now in an egg-shaped orbit. Uh, that will bring the uh, orbit to 69 miles uh, in its entire passage around the moon at the moment. The orbit is higher than that at what is called apocynthium, the high point. It will, uh... The new firing will make a circular. Zero, zero, two, one. Zero, zero, two. Not applicable. Plus, zero, zero, one, eight, eight. This is the engineering data feed into the computer that you are hearing in the background being fed up from Houston to the spacecraft. This seems rather to be in sort of engineering data. Uh, must, of course, go to the spacecraft. The flight must be conducted even as these men gaze down on the moon in this historic trip, first men ever to have such a view. And they shared it with us through the magnificent television pictures that we saw just a little while ago. Jim Lovell incidentally reported a moment ago that the ice on the windows seems to be melting. Uh, I suppose we'll get some engineering data from Houston on that shortly. Uh, it may indicate that indeed the heat uh, that is being reflected from the moon as well as the sun's considerable heat around 250 degrees out there uh, with the spacecraft holding a stable attitude uh, is uh, such that uh, it's greater than anticipated and is causing this melting as well as that uh, high temperature recorded earlier in the spacecraft's cooling system. During its passage from Earth out to the moon, you know. Uh, the spacecraft was kept in what was called a barbecue mode uh, by the uh, spaceman. It uh, means that the spacecraft was rotated uh, once every hour. It kept uh, like, a, like it were on a spit uh, and moved at the rate of the minute hand on your clock. Once an hour, it rolled around to uh, equalize the heat of the sun from the bright side, a difference of 500 degrees, 250 plus on one side and 250 minus on the other. The engineering data still being read up to the spacecraft and now being repeated by the uh, spacecraft, I think by Frank Borman, uh, to the ground. We've heard the voices of all three of the astronauts this morning. Borman concerning the status of his spacecraft 
Lovell concerning the navigational aspects and what he could see from the windows. Bill Anders reporting on his photographic mission as he aimed the television camera for us. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 8 will continue in a moment. We'll keep uh, monitoring the spacecraft as it communicates uh, with mission control at Houston, Texas, 230,000 miles away here on Earth uh, for any interesting information back from those uh, three astronauts. While here on Earth, we can only contemplate what uh, magnificence uh, this uh, flight has imparted to our lives, to our future, and to our history. Dr. Robert Jastrow, the director of the Goddard Institute for Space Studies, is here at our Space Center with Steve Rowan. And I know that he's been following every minute of these transmissions this morning. Uh, and I like, invite you gentlemen to share your observations with us. Thank you, Walter. Dr. Jastrow, I suppose first uh, we might talk about um, the origin of the moon. It's, uh, there's some controversy, isn't there, over just what, uh, what form Yes. The moon it was in its original state? Yes, there is, and, and the uh, information uh, returned by spacecraft has answered some questions in that connection, but raised as many as it's answered. Uh, what questions has it answered, first of all? Well, it has uh, shown that there is evidence of uh, what seems to be evidence of volcanoes and uh, perhaps of some melting in the moon's interior. Uh, the spacecraft evidence has, a, has shown other indications that the moon cannot have been melted in its recent history. These are contradictory uh, results which, whose significance we still have to uh, think about a little more. Uh, the, you, you might, if, if I can back away from your question to a larger one into which it fits, uh, you might ask why it uh, matters to us to know how the moon was formed. Indeed, why? And uh, if it's not premature to bring that point up, I would like to, uh, to uh, offer a view on it. Uh, we're interested primarily in the Earth, of course, and in the long run, perhaps a very long run, in the possibility of other Earth-like planets possibly inhabited. We would like to know how the Earth was formed and uh, what conditions were on the Earth in the early years of its history when life appeared here. It happens that the first billion years of the Earth's history are completely erased by the erosion of water and the biological activity of the life that has since developed. That missing billion years is the critical billion years in which life appeared on this earth according to the fossil record. And we have a chance, not a certainty, but a good chance of finding out something about it by studying the surface of the moon. Are you suggesting that we might find some life in its, uh, in its early forms on or under the surface of the moon? We may find the physical and chemical conditions, or a clue to those conditions, as they existed on the Earth when life appeared. It's not likely that life exists on the moon because it's a very dry planet. It's not completely excluded that life exists. There may be subsurface water in some form. There may have been water when the moon was young, enough for chemical evolution of life to have gotten a start. Those are small chances, but, but not excluded. But the point is that we will find something uh, about that missing billion years in the Earth's history, or at least we may. In order to do that, however, we have to unravel a record of the Moon's past, which the orbiter photographs have shown to be quite complicated, with an overlay of meteorite impacts and some volcanic activity, perhaps. And that is why we, uh, we would like to know what the Moon's formation and early history have been. To, to, to read that missing record of a billion years in its, in its, on its surface. Dr. Jastrow, your Institute for Space Studies is an arm of the uh, Goddard Space Flight Center, which is, of course, part of NASA, so perhaps it's not fair to ask you this question, but uh, will this mission in any way advance the scientific knowledge which you scientists seek to gain from the moon? Uh, indirectly, very much, uh, because it's a major step, the most important single step, perhaps, uh, on the route to the lunar landing, and the lunar landing has the big scientific payoff, namely the return of samples of lunar rock to the Earth for laboratory study and for dating. We may find pieces of rock on the moon whose age turns out, when dated on the Earth, to be four or four and a half billion years old, older rocks than we've ever, ever found on the Earth. 
we may find in them organic molecules which can be recognized as the precursors of living molecules on, in a more favorable environment like ours. And that's the payoff, that analysis of lunar rocks. This flight is a necessary step towards the achievement of the technique for the landing. That's its significance.